please just open our ears. Give us hearts to perceive. Minds to understand. And a willingness to obey. So I want to talk um, about standing together as a family. As, as Christian family or just your own family, how do you really stand together? How many of you guys have problems in your family? Okay, raise your hand if you have problems in your family. How many guys know there's lots of problems in the family of God? One of the most amazing things that we're learning is the reason that we have so many problems is because we have belief systems. From the time we're really little, our brains get hardwired by what we're taught and what the culture teaches us. Most uh, neuropsychologists believe almost forever that your, your mind and your brain is not able to change. If you have problems and issues, you're just stuck. But God's word says you can renew your mind. Everybody say renew your mind. How many have heard that before? But how many wonder why you aren't getting a renewed mind? How many of you guys have some of the same bad habits and problems you had 10 years ago? How many of you know I'm not talking about your spouse? Some of you are going, she's still my problem. So I want to talk this morning about a couple areas. So one of the things I want to encourage you guys to start doing is reading certain books. One book is by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. Dr. Carolyn Leaf. And it's called Switch on Your Brain. How many guys need to switch on your brain? She's a neuropsychologist. And she's Christian. And when she got trained in the 80s and 90s, most neuropsychologists believe, as I said, your, your brain's not really changing. Modern technology is finally catching up with the Bible. How many guys know that this is the word? Even if you don't believe it, what, what I found to be true that what God said 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago is still true today. Now, neuropsychologists know that you can actually renew your mind. And, and what I would tell you really, not to get overly technical, but it's actually renew your brain. So, so to, cl to clarify this, for our sermon this morning. I'm going to say your mind. Everybody say your mind. Is not my brain. My, my mind. Is my will. My emotions. How I feel. And that wires my brain. 
So the brain is the physical brain here. The choices you make, your free will is your mind. All of us is, have heard you are what you believe. God originated that. Think on these things. Whatever is good. Whatever is noble. Whatever is true. Whatever is virtuous. Virtuous. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's exactly correct. So I, I want to start by saying this, you guys. The, the foundation of your life, whatever the foundation of your life, will become what you believe. I challenge all of you to make this the foundation of your life. If you will rewire your brain with this word, it will, it will change you forever. So, I've been a Christian 35 years. I've heard all the scriptures. Renew your mind. It's Romans chapter 12. How many of you guys have tried to do that? Prayed really hard. God make me new. I don't want to keep doing these things. Five years later, you're still doing these things. Ten years later, you're still doing these things. Because your brain got hardwired when you were little. So it's more than just trying to think about something. You have to consciously work at it. So as quick as I can, we've told people meditate on the Word of God. But most of us don't know what meditation is. So we memorize instead of meditate. So I memorized a lot of scripture. Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, self control. I've been quoting that for 35 years. You know, my lovely wife let me know. <laughs> you can quote it. You just can't live it. How many of you guys know the world looks at us as Christians and tells us you can quote stuff, you can say things. But you have a really hard time living it. Here's the crazy cool news. Sorry, I'm using she's like, why are you using that street language, man? I'm, like, I'm, I'm from Southern California. What can I say? Dude! No, I'm kidding. I totally forgot about interpretation. Usually I get my message a little clear. We should just laugh and be done. That's it. So here's what's really good. In the last couple of years, my wife and my children go, wow. You're really changing. I want you to know that the most important people that will say that you change is not people out there. But it'll be your family. And when you start getting your brain renewed and rewired, you'll actually start to believe it yourself. 
I found out that I am like most of us, I didn't really love me very well. But I would never say that to people. Because I'm a pastor. And pastors say what the Bible says. God loves me. God loves you. I just don't know how to love you. Truth is, until I learn to love me, I can't love you. God says I'm his son. God says I'm perfect in his sight. But I didn't believe that. I could quote it to you. But I didn't, I didn't start believing it to the last couple of years as I renewed my mind and I started to meditate, not memorize, meditate every day in the morning, one hour with Jesus, meditating on his word. So I want to talk about three things really quick. Really quick is a relative term. <laughs> Some you got there. I want to talk about feelings. Finances. And forgiveness. Three extremely important things in life, but I'm going to mostly talk about our feelings. Everybody say feelings. Because how you feel will become how you live. How many of you guys know just because you feel a certain way doesn't make it true? So I want to read a little article from Psychology Today. It's not a, it's, this is not a Christian publishing organization. But the research that is happening in the psychology world is agreeing with what God said about your brain a long time ago. Okay, so recent research uh, has shown that you are what you believe. This way of looking at how we evolve as individuals is quite compelling theoretically. As a young psychiatrist, I was classically trained in traditional methods of psychotherapy. The often asked emblematic question was this, how do you feel? How many guys have heard that before? Right? Yes. How do you feel? It didn't occur to me until years later into the process and emotions were actually different things. Emotions, right? Listen very carefully. Feelings and emotions are actually different things, but very related. <laughs> emotions are the state of being, while feelings are your individual, very personal expressions of these emotions. Still, it didn't occur to me to ask why feelings ran so strong, like from person to person, one person could have super strong feelings about something and someone else could not. What it was, what, what, what is that that got determined? It took a question posed to me years later to identify what seemingly was missing. Do patients talk about what they believe? Everybody say believe. believe. It's not enough, you guys, to just have feelings about something. You have to really chase and understand why you believe it. How many of you guys know that's what the Bible tries to get us to do? That's what this book is all about. I want to give this what God said. I'm going to give you this word to bring a foundation to your life so you can believe on things that are always going to be good for you, always going to bless you, always going to cover you, even when your feelings don't agree with what you read. Yes. Okay? Okay, 
So she goes on to say, do patients, believe, do, do patients talk about what they believe? I realize in most instances they don't. In fact, most people are not sure what they really believe beyond that which has been taught to them or programmed when they were young. What you perceive is what you believe. Your personal perception of reality is determined by the beliefs that you hold. This does not necessarily make them real. Let me say that one again. Your personal perception of reality is determined by the beliefs that you hold, but that does not necessarily make them real, except for the fact that you believe they're real. Have you ever believed anything and you found out later it just wasn't true or real, but you actually really believed it? So God has made our brains to function that way. So Sunday after I preached, I had a, a number of people come and talk to me. One young man in particular. And he's struggling with a lot of things in our culture today. And he said, wow. Okay, wow. Oh. You really gave me something to think about. Because he's believed certain things about himself since he was a little boy. So he just said, that's just how I am and who I am. But, but he found out that that's just what he believed. So we have to be really careful because I don't want outside things to make me believe what I think I should be. I want God's love and his goodness to make me understand who I really am. I have lots of other statistics. Most Christians believe God is angry at them. The high percentage of Christians in the earth, they actually believe God's mad. If you think God is mad at you, will you trust him? Will you serve God with all of your life if you think he's angry at you all the time? I will tell you we won't. I don't want to, when I'm hurting and struggling, I'm not going to run to somebody if I think they're angry at me. So I'm going to paraphrase for time. Acts chapter 9. Saul, Saul, who becomes the Apostle Paul, went around killing Christians. He believed it was the right thing to do. He actually believed that persecuting Christians was helping God. We all know that what he felt was not based on truth. And I submit to you that every one of us in this room, all of us in this room, have some belief systems that are not healthy. So most of you know the story of how God spoke to Saul. On the road to Damascus, right, a light shines and a voice speaks. And Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus. Jesus. 
How many guys know one encounter with Jesus will change your life forever? කීදෙනෙක් විශ්වාස කරනවා අද එක සම්මුඛ වීම ක්‍රිස්තු වහන්සේ සමග බව වෙනස් කරන ලැබෙනවා. I will tell you that Saul had an encounter that changed his life. සාවල්ට ලැබුණා ඒ සම්මුඛ වීම ක්‍රිස්තු වහන්සේ සමග ඔහුගේ ජීවිතය වෙනස් කළා. But the reason he went on to become the great apostle and complete amazing things ඔහු මහත්තු අපෝස්තලයෙක් වෙන්න ඔහු කරපු ඒ මහත්තු දේවල් කරන්නත් හේතුව was because he encountered Jesus every day after that. ඒ දවසේ ඒ සම්මුඛ වීමෙන් පස්සේ හැම දාම සම්මුඛ වීමක් කොට තිබුණා. Some of us in this room සමහර දෙනෙක් මේ ස්ථානයේ ඉන්න had an amazing encounter with Jesus at some point. එක එක කාලෙක යම් දවසක යම් ආකාරයට උන්වහන්සේ එක සම්මුඛ වීමක් තිබිලා තිබෙනවා. But we're not encountering him every day. නමුත් හැම දාම උන්වහන්සේව සම්මුඛ වෙන්නේ නැහැ. And we're wondering why our destiny is not being fulfilled. අපි හිතන ඇයි අපේ මේ අපේ ගමනාන්තය අපි යන්න ස්ථානය සම්පූර්ණ වෙන්නේ නැත්ද කියලා. I just want to tell you encounter Jesus every day. උන්වහන්සේව සම්මුඛ වෙන්න හැම දවසකම. And you will rewire your belief system. ඊට පස්සේ ඔබගේ මනස අලුත් කරනු ලැබනවා ඔබගේ ඒ විශ්වාස මතය අලුත් කරනු ලැබනවා. So the second thing really quick I want to talk about finances. මම දෙවෙනි කාරණය ලෙස කතා කරන්නේ ඔබගේ ආර්ථිකය. The pastor is like, oh, oh. <laughs> the Bible says in Psalms 24:1. That everything is God's. If you believe that everything in this earth is God's and that He gives you a certain amount of whatever to manage well, to take care of well, it will be easy for you to give. ඔබට උන්වහන්සේට පෙරලා දෙන්න හරි පහසු වෙනවා දෙවියන් වහන්සේ මේ හැමදේම උන්වහන්සේට අයිතිව තිබෙද්දී ඔබට යම් ආකාර යම් ප්‍රමාණයක ගබඩාකාරකමක් දීලා තියෙද්දී ඔබට ලේසි උන්වහන්සේට නැවත දෙන්න. But if you believe it's yours ඔබ නමුත් ඔබ හිතනවා නම් ඒක ඔබගේ කියලා. You're going to have a hard time giving. ඒ එහෙනම් ඔබට අමාරු වෙයි නැවත ඒක උන්වහන්සේට දෙන්න. God ask us to tithe and give above our tithe. දෙවියන් වහන්සේ වගේ වචනේ කියන අපට උන්වහන්සේට දසින් කොටසත් ඊට ඉහලිනුත් දෙන්න කියලා. Most of you know a tithe is a tenth, 10%. Uh, අපි හැම කෙනෙක් ගොඩක් අය දන්නවා දසින් කොටසක් කියන්නේ tithe එක කියන්නේ දසින් කොටසයි. But most Christians don't tithe. Uh, ගොඩක් කිතුණු දසින් කොටස දෙන්නේ නැහැ. And I believe they don't tithe because they don't trust God. මම විශ්වාස කරනවා ඔවුන් දසින් කොටස දෙන්නේ නැත්තේ ඔවුන් දෙවියන් වහන්සේ විශ්වාස කරන්නේ නැහැ. If you think God is mad at you ඔබ හිතනවා නම් උන්වහන්සේ ඔබ එක කෝපෙන් ඉන්න කියලා. ඔබ කවදාකවත් උන්වහන්සේ විශ්වාස කරන්න යන්නේ. ඊට පස්සේ උන්වහන්සේ ඔබට දෙන්න බෑ. Matthew 23:23. මතේව 23:23 කියනවා. I've had people come to me and say pastor. මනුෂ්‍යයි ලමන් ළඟට කියන pastor. Tithing is not in the New Testament. දසින් කොටස ඇවිල්ලා අලුත් කිවුසුමේ නැහැ. Well, I said do you want to go back to the Old Testament? මංකේ <laughs> 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 So so look what look what Jesus said. This is him dealing catch catch the context he's dealing with religious people. Watch. Unwahase e agamika manushyan ekai garu dena kare metana. He says what sorrow awaits you teachers of the law you Pharisees you hypocrites for you are careful to tithe on the tiniest income of your herb garden but you ignore the most important aspects of the law justice mercy and faith. You should tithe. Yes. but do not neglect the more important things so jesus literally makes the point tithing is something you should do but he's more concerned about your heart and your actions than your tithe listen you should tithe and if you do god will bless you not just with finances he will bless you in ways that i can't even describe i don't have time to get into it he will do it amen මෙසානේ 23 23 කියනවා ලියන්නේ පරිසුවර නිවංචාකාර වූ නුඹලට දුක් වේ මග්නිසාද නුඹලා සෝද තලාය ශත පුෂ්පය සුදු දුරුය යන මෙයින් දසෙන් කොටසක් දෙන්න ඔය නමුත් යුක්තියත් දයාවත් විශ්වාසකමත් යන ව්‍යවස්ථාවට වඩා වැදගත් කාරණ නුඹලා විසින් අත්හැර තිබේ පාස්ටර් නැවත කිව්වා ඊට පස්සේ ඒ 
දෙවියන් වහන්සේ කියනවා අපිට දාසයෙන් කොටස උන්වහන්සේට දෙන්න කියලා ඒකත් ඇර ඊට වඩා උන්වහන්සේ බලා ගෙන ඉන්නවා ඊට ඉහලින් අපගේ හදවත හදව ඒ හදවතේ යුක්තිය දයාව විශ්වාසවන්තකම ඒ ගුණාංග වලින් ඒ පිරීම ඒ දේ තුල ක්‍රියාත්මක වී මුන් වහන්සේගේ ආශාවයි So the last thing I want to say quickly is about forgiveness. මම ඉක්මනින් සමාව දීම ගැන කතා කරන්න යනවා. The reason I talked about feelings first The reason I spoke about feelings first. Palamukota apita mage ara hankima gana man obata katha kare. Because what you believe and feel will be how you live. Obata hangena denana deta tula tama oba jeevat wenta yanne. I have had so many people over the years come and talk to me. Aurudu gaanak tula ma vetata manushyala katha karala thiyena. When I talk about forgiveness. Mama samavadima gana katha karaddi. And they look at me own man this balana and they say i can't forgive mata ba samawa denna i used to not be very nice about it mata man kalin nan eka gana tikak me kena thada lesa kriya kara here's what i know man dan man dana danna gana tiyena de some of you have gone through things in this room samahara e me kaambare tule inna dewal hara gila tiyena they're so hard amaru kalawa so painful abedanatmaka i can't i don't even understand the pain you've gone through mama danne oba kochchere e vedanawal thura gihillada kiyala and it makes it really hard to forgive ir passe obata amaru tattayaka innawa e obata samawa denna but what i found out about forgiveness mama samawa dima gane danagatha deyak thama it's not about the other person eka anith ay gana nove it's about you ඒක ඔබ ගැනයි it's about god setting your heart free uh ඒ දෙවන් මහසෙගේ හදවත ඔබ කෙරෙහි so jesus said if you forgive others their sin uh jesus වහන්සේ කිව්වා ඔබ අන්නයිට සමාව දෙනවා නම් then i'll forgive you ඊට පස්සේ මම ඔබට සමාව දෙනවා and everybody say yay and with him oh කියලා කිව්වා in honor of my friend robby booth yay yeah. <laughs> but he says another sentence after it ඊට පස්සේ උන්වහන්සේ තවත් වාක්‍යයක් කියලා. I don't even know what to do with this sentence. මම දන්නේ නැහැ මොකද මේක එක කරන්න කියලා. Jesus said if you don't forgive other people. ඔබ සමාව දෙන්නේ නැත්නම් අන් අයට then my father won't forgive you. මගේ පියාණන් වහන්සේත් උඹට සමාව දෙන්නේ නැහැ. Seriously theologically I don't know what to do about that verse. සැබවින්ම දේව ධර්මයේ තුල මම දන්නේ නැහැ මේකත් එක්ක මම මොනවද කරන්නේ කියලා. Is it talking about eternity? It means I can't go to heaven if I don't forgive. මේක මට සදා කාලයට යාම අවහිර කරනවද? I don't know for sure where it lies. The truth is there's a lot of places in the Bible I don't know for sure. ඒ සැබවින්ම සමහර දේ වචනේ වචනේ අන් මම දන්නේ නැහැ සැබවින්ම කුමක්ද කියලා. This is what I know if you hang out with Jesus every day and receive his forgiveness. මම දන්නවා මේ දේ නමුත් ඔබ ඇත්තටම උන්වහන්සේට ඔබට උන්වහන්සේට ඔබට පුළුවන්කම දෙන අන්නයට සමාව දෙන්න. When you get a revelation of how kind he is to you and how much he's forgiven you and how much he loves you, it makes it way easier to forgive even though it's painful. It's like, man, I just going to do it. ඔබ හදවත කොච්චර වේදනාවෙන් අමාරුකමෙන් තුල හිටියත් ඇත් සැබවින් උන්වහන්සේ ඔබ කෙරෙහි දක්වන කරුණාවත් ප්‍රේමයත් ඔබ ඒ දේ තුල එලිදරව් ලැබපු ඔබට හරි ලේසි වෙනවා අන්නයට සමාව දෙන්න. So we're going to pray. I had a, a clip to show but we're going to just move on talking about eternity. Um all of this matters because ultimately where you live forever matters. Amen. So I'm going to paraphrase the clip for you. It's a friend Francis Chan. Some of you may have heard of Francis Chan's amazing preacher. So one of his favorite sermon illustrations, he has this rope and it would be like this cable right here and it just goes forever. And so let's just say this rope is eternity. Yeah. Right? ඔබ බොහෝ දිනක් දන්නව ඇති ෆ්‍රැන්සිස් චෑන් කියන ඒ දේශකයා ඔහු හරි බලවත් දේශකෙක් ඔහු ගොඩක් වෙලාවට ලණුවක් අතට අරගෙන ඒක විග්‍රහ කරලා පෙන්වා සදා කාලේ කියන දේ. And at the end of the rope there's this little piece of red tape on the end of the rope. ඒ දිග දිග දිගම දිග ලණු එක චූටි කෑලක් අන්තිම කෙලවරේ තියෙන පොඩියට රතුවෙන් පොඩි කොටසක්. It it's about this this long. ඒක මෙච්චරක් විතර ඇති. And he said this represents your life on earth. ඔහු පෙන්නන මේක තමා මේකේ සංකේත වත්තන්නේ ඔබ පොළොවේ ඉන්න ටික කාලය. And the rest of this rope is eternity forever, a million years, 5 million forever. මිලියන මිලියන ගානක් දශක ගානක් කියන්න බැරි ප්‍රමාණයක් තමයි. We spend our whole life focusing on this. 
ඔබේ මුළු ජීවිත කාලයම මේ චූටි රතු පාට කොටසේ අවධානය යොමු කරුවොත් and most of us work really 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 hard so we can try to have good fun stuff for that last tiny piece of this and we forget about all of that ඔබ හැර එතන තියෙන චූටි ඒ කොටසේ රතු පාට පොඩි කොටස ගැන අවධානය යොමු කර මෙන්න හරිම සතුටු වෙන්න උත්සාහ කරනවා නමුත් අච්චර දිග රෝබෙක ඉතුරු හරිය අමතක කරලා but what we do with this dictates where we'll spend this මේ ඔබ මේ චූටි කොටස තුල කරන දේ තම නිගමනය කරන්නේ ඔබ අර අර කාලාන්තරයක් ජීවත් වෙන කාලයයි ඒ සිදුන දේ now i'm going to quote francis chan මම ඔබට ඒ francis chan I agree with this quote, but it's his quote. Mama, ekanga veno ahuge mathe te maksa de ka ahuge. He said, "Some of you guys wonder why I give so much attention to that instead of this, and you say you're stupid." Sorry. <laughs> I'll just do this one in English. <laughs> and he goes, "But then I look at this, and I think that there's all of this." and i think you're stupid mama e chuti kotasa gena hitala ara ekata sampurna avadane deela araka okkoma amata keruwothin oba mode kela kiyana god wants us to think about eternity devian wahanse ta awashyai sada kale gena api sitana wata god wants us to be witnesses like our brother devian wahanse ta awashyai ara sahodaraya wage annaya ta sakshya kena don't ever share their faith at all සමහර දෙනෙක් කවදාකතෝන්ගේ ඇදහිලා අන්නයි සමග බෙදා ගන්න. It's like some crazy number like 93% of Christians never actually share the gospel. 93% කිතුනෝ කවදාකතෝන්ගේ ඇදහිලා ඔන් බෙදා ගන්න. And I would disagree a little because I think your life shares the gospel every day if you say you're a Christian. මම විශ්වාස කරනවා මම දරන මතය නම් ඔබ සැබවින්ම ඔබ දිනදා ජීවිතේ ඔබගේ කිතුනු කම් ප්‍රකාශ කරනවා. But if our life is not expressing God's love and goodness then it's pretty negative for the world. ඔබගේ ජීවිතය තුලින් උන්වහන්සේගේ යහපත්කම තුන්වහන්සේගේ ප්‍රේමයත් විදාපාන් නැත්තම් ඒක ලෝකයට ඍණාත්මක පින්තූරයක් තමා ගෙනෙන්නේ. So here's the key for me. How you rewire your brain over the next year, 2 years, 5 years, 10 years. How you get God's word to meditate on it, spend time with him, it will dictate how you live forever. If you get into his word and rewire your brain, you will start living for eternity. සැබවින්ම ඔබ ඊළඟට එන අවුරුදු කීපය තුල උන්වහන්සේගේ වචනය කියවලා මෙනෙහි කරලා ඔබගේ මනස ඒ චිත්තාත්මයෙන් ඔබ අලුත් උන කල ඒක නිගමනය කරන ඔබගේ ඒ සදා කාලය කෙසේද ගෙවෙන්න යන්නේ කියලා. So let's all stand. අපි හැම කෙනෙක්ම නැකිටිමු. I heard a lot of amens in my head when I said stand right there cuz it's over. <laughs> I like to have fun. Manga sai vinoda wenna. How many guys know we should be the happiest people on earth? Kidene kishwasana da api tama harima preethiyen mintuna kandayama kiyala. I go to a lot of churches. Man godak sabahal walta yana. Sometimes I wonder. Samarayata ma sithena. If they're handing lemons out at the door. Dehi gedi denada kiyala pat atulle denna. Because I look at people's faces. Onge moonal diha balanti. And instead of being happy and smiling, they're sitting in chairs like this. <laughs> and I thought, oh God, help us. Oh, Swami, I'm going to do that. So let's pray. Today, I ask. That our Father would pour out His love and His goodness and His kindness. If you need Jesus today, I, I just encourage you to open your heart. As we're praying for people in a minute, you can come and talk to me or Sareka or a number of leaders in this church. If you would like to talk to the people of Yaksha Karanta no Prabhu aap dela katha karan no vinayake ante me aap mathe pastor Sareka. Today I really want to focus 
myself. I keep not liking myself. I keep being critical to other people. And there's a hundred other things I could mention. So I'm just going to ask you to boldly raise your hand if that's you. Say, I still struggle, Pastor. I'm hurting. I, I want to do better, but I keep going back. I keep doing the thing. If that's you, put your hand up. Come on, be honest this morning, you guys. We're here to get real. Like, man, I, I'm struggling. I, I want to, but it's not working for me. Okay. So everybody with your hand up, I want you to come up here right now. Come up here. We're going to pray for you. Come on, be bold. Be honest, right? Some of you are going, yeah, I'm fine. Good. Pray for those. If you're good right now, if everyone that raised your hand, please come and, and just make fill in the spaces on the sides, all the way over on each side. I told you guys I'm barely learning this in my own life right now. The craziest thing that happened to me. Maybe a year ago, I was talking to my wife. I wasn't trying to get her to say something. We were just talking. And she looked at me really funny. Strange. And she said these words. I love what you're becoming. Made me feel really good. But it also broke my heart. Because we've been married 30 years. And it took 29. For my wife to say that. Here's the good news. If you will rewire your brain, people will notice. Our staff notices. My children notice. People that know me notice. I'm learning how to love people like Jesus did. But I had to change belief systems I had from the time I was a little kid. And it's more than memorizing scripture. I quoted scripture for 30 years. So lift your hands to heaven. Come on, you start praying right now. Close yourself and talk to Jesus. He's so kind. He's so loving. Church leaders, others, come up. Start praying for people right now. Papa, I'm asking in Jesus' name that you would help us to follow through that we would get the books that we would learn what meditation really is meditation leads to transformation so Jesus, I pray you help us in this process. This is not one magic prayer. But it is the beginning to open the hearts and minds of everyone that says yes. So I want all of us to say yes. Yes. Come on, say yes. Say Jesus. Everyone say this. Jesus, help me to renew my mind. Help me to change belief systems. 
Listen, every one of you, you need to read the Word of God every day and meditate on it. I encourage you to stay in one place for at least a few